Good evening. As the ninth dean in the storied and rich history of the UIC College of Education, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our spring 2019 commencement. Please take a moment to turn off or mute all cell phones and other electronic devices so everyone can enjoy the ceremony without interruption. We have gathered this evening to celebrate the hard work of our fine graduates. On behalf of the College of Education, our deans, faculty, staff, and students, we are happy that you have joined us for this occasion. This celebration is also occurring during Ramadan. Therefore, we have designated prayer areas available through exit 105 in the rear. There will be an usher there to assist you. Please stand, if you are able, for our national anthem sung by Kelly Longmire.
Thank you. Please be seated. I now have the distinct honor of introducing Susan Poser, Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where she also serves as a Chief Operating Officer. Dr. Poser is responsible for the university's academic enterprise, including the planning, implementation, and assessment of UIC's academic programs. Dr. Poser received her bachelor's degree with honors in ancient Greek and political science from Swarthmore College, and both her JD and PhD in jurisprudence and social policy from the University of California, Berkeley. Since coming to UIC in February 2016, Provost Poser has initiated many programs for faculty and students, including increased opportunities for faculty research collaborations and professional development and data-driven approaches to enhancing students' academic success in order to increase student retention and graduation rates. Please welcome Provost Poser. Thank you, Dean Tatum. Welcome to the University of Illinois at Chicago Spring Commencement Ceremonies. And hello, class of 2019. Congratulations. And to the families, parents, siblings, grandparents, spouses, partners, children, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends, thank you for being here today. And thank you for everything that you have done to support these students. Graduates, let's show our appreciation and love for all of the people in the audience here, and maybe some who are not here, who made this day possible. And last but not least, let's take a moment to thank your professors, your mentors and advisors, and UIC staff members, the ones who helped to get you to where you are sitting today by not only teaching you, but also talking you through some challenging projects and assignments, sometimes pushing you to your limits when maybe you thought it couldn't be done, and a big thank you to them. I send you all greetings from our Chancellor, Michael Amaridis, who would never miss a UIC commencement except in one circumstance, so that he can attend his own daughter's graduation from college, which is where he is right now. He sends his hearty congratulations and warm wishes to all of you. Take a moment now to turn to the person next to you and congratulate them. You all, you all reach this day together in study groups, in residence hall groups, in student organizations, at the cultural centers, and just hanging out in the student centers or the library. I know you helped each other working together, keeping each other awake before exams, and thankfully keeping our coffee shops in business. You are all here today as one graduating class. Since this is my opportunity to offer some words before we confer your degrees, I want to talk for a moment about what you will be taking with you when you walk out of these doors today as UIC alumni and why it's important. Of course, you will be walking out with your degrees, although actually not really, you will be walking out with a symbol of your degree. The piece of paper representing your degree is, as they say, in the mail. To our undergraduates, you are also leaving with a well-exercised mind. Your brains were probably a little flabby when you first got to UIC from high school or from community college, maybe not yet tested by the rigor provided by the outstanding faculty at a research university. But now your minds are firm. They are taut and agile, having been shaped by your experiences here learning how to write well, to analyze critically, to calculate, to communicate, to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. UIC was like a heavy workout for your brain, which is now in good shape to take on the world, whether that is further study in graduate or professional school, a new job, 
or maybe some other adventure. To our graduate and professional students, at the risk of taking this metaphor too far, I would say your minds are now like elite Olympic athletes, at peak performance and ready for the big time. And whatever degree you are getting today, you are all taking with you from UIC a world-class education, but also some real-life experiences that come from completing projects, conducting research, and working in teams. And you had these experiences at one of the most diverse universities in the nation, where diversity is found in countless ways by race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, economic status, country of origin, citizenship status, and so forth. These are experiences that employers look for and need to fill any job because they represent the reality of the 21st century workforce. The fact that many of you balance jobs or caring for family members while at UIC shows a deep level of commitment, responsibility, and determination that will serve you well as you go forward from here. And finally, I hope you take from UIC the one thing that UIC as one of the most politically and socially engaged universities in the nation was uniquely positioned to help you develop. And that is a passion for civic engagement and an understanding of your responsibility to engage in making the world better with an informed and a strong voice. Use that passion and that voice to fight for what's right and to fight for justice. There is more justice to be had everywhere and certainly in all aspects of education. I hope that political, cultural, and civic engagement will be an important part of your future. Our collective future as a country and as a world depends on this. And having attended UIC, you know what it is and you know how to do it. So on behalf of UIC, I promise you that we will always be your university. We will continue to support you. And like you, we will continue to grow in strength and reputation, thereby enhancing the value of your degrees. And we will always strive to make you proud, just as you have and will continue to make us proud. After all, the greatness of a university is the sum of its alumni, and you are all now part of that legacy. And please remember to share your future accomplishments with us and return to visit, to mentor the students who follow in your footsteps. We need you now as role models for those coming up, because that's what you are, and that is what you have become just by virtue of sitting where you're sitting today. And we need you as ambassadors for UIC, to tell the world what is going on here at this most wonderful university. You are now our shining example of all of that. So once again, congratulations, class of 2019, and Godspeed. Thank you, Provost Poser. I am now privileged to introduce to you this year's commencement speaker, Erica L. Sanchez is the daughter of Mexican immigrants. A poet, novelist, and essayist, her debut poetry collection, Lessons on Expulsion, was a finalist for the Penn American Open Book Award. Her debut young adult novel, I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter, is a New York Times bestseller and a National Book Award finalist. She is currently a Princeton uh, Arts Fellow and a recent recipient of the 21st Century Award from the Chicago Public Library Foundation and a National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship in Poetry. Erica grew up in Cicero, Illinois. As a daughter of undocumented Mexican immigrants, Erica has always been determined to defy borders of any kind. Erica graduated Phi Beta Kappa and Magna Cum Laude from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Welcome home, Erica. Then went to Madrid, Spain on a Fulbright scholarship. From Madrid, Erica moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where she received an MFA in creative writing from the University of New Mexico. Please join me in welcoming Erica L. Sanchez back to our campus as this year's commencement speaker.
Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gina Flynn. Thank you, Dr. Alfred Tatum, the UIC College of Education, and the class of 2019. I am incredibly honored to be here today. I can't believe that I graduated from UIC 13 years ago. I remember I was so hopeful that day. I was 22 years old, don't do the math, and on the verge of moving to Spain on a Fulbright scholarship, and everything seemed possible. So much has happened since then. Many triumphs, but just as important, many, many disappointments. So many. Let me reiterate, it happened a lot. Como te gusta la mala vida, my mother often said to me throughout my life. Roughly translated, it means you really enjoy living a bad life. I suspect many other brown girls heard the same admonishment from their families. My mother believed that I always chose the darkest, thorniest path when there was a perfectly pristine road available to me. Though I rolled my eyes at this at the time, she was right in a sense. I did make my life much more complicated than it needed to be. I sought drama and searched for obstacles, both consciously and unconsciously. I was bored by normalcy and stability. Perhaps this is one of the reasons I became a writer, a poet specifically. All signs point to a life of poverty, obscurity, and unnecessary strife? Well, then please sign me up. I've always wanted what seemed unattainable for a person like me. I'm forever exhilarated by high stakes, by the possibility of failing monumentally. And fail I did, again and again. After I graduated with my MFA in poetry, who does that? I had no idea what to do with my life. I couldn't find any work that even was remotely related to what I had studied, so I took jobs that I had no interest in, only to pay the bills. I worked in marketing, public relations, and nonprofits. I was overqualified for most of these jobs, and I felt like I was squandering my talents. For two years, I was a print estimator. Don't even ask me what that is, please. I was so frustrated and depressed. In fact, my next book is titled Crying in the Bathroom, which is both metaphorical and literal. But despite so much discouragement, I kept writing because I knew it was what I was meant to do in this life. It didn't even feel like a choice. Once I almost got fired for writing at work. Oops. My favorite writer, Toni Morrison said, if there's a book that you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. That is what I did with both of my books, Lessons on Expulsion, and I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter, now available at your local Target. I loved reading, but I grew up with white stories. Most at my disposal were about middle-class white kids living in the suburbs, and their problems were so foreign to me. I loved Judy Bloom, but I was so confused about the characters' lives. I grew up in a small, roach-infested apartment on the west side of Chicago, Cicero, and in the books I read, families had maids and summer homes. I remember one family didn't eat leftovers. What? I also adored the Babysitter's Club and read every single book. There was a time I very naively wanted to start my own club, then I quickly realized I lived in the hood. We don't do that. Needless to say, there was rarely any book I could relate to. I was lucky enough to find The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros in high school, which was beautiful and comforting, but that wasn't enough. It came out the year that I was born, 1984. I said, don't do the math, and there hadn't been anything like it since. I didn't know other books by Latinx authors. I was desperate for more. I wanted to see myself in literature. Where were all the messed up brown girls, poor ones, the ones who sulked in their bedrooms listening to Nine Inch Nails on repeat? I decided that if they didn't exist, I was going to create them. 
When I say that writing saved my life, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not trying to be cute, I swear. I have struggled with depression since I was a child, and during my darkest times, I turned to books for solace to escape my painful reality. I wrote the bulk of I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter when I was recovering from one of the worst depressions I've ever experienced. At 30 years old, a very stressful PR job led me to a nervous breakdown. The stress triggered depression and anxiety so severe that I became suicidal. For months, I couldn't write. I felt what I had loved most in this world had been taken away from me. As I struggled out of this existential hole with the help of therapy and medication, I slowly found my way back to my work. Once I did, I latched onto my writing. It was my life raft. I found meaning again in the story of 15-year-old Julia Reyes. I became consumed by the novel. I wrote and wrote with desperation. For months, it was all I thought about, all I did. I was able to work through my mental illness by writing about it. In 100 Years of Solitude, Gabriel Garcia Marquez says that human beings are not born once and for all on the day their mothers give birth to them, but that life obligates them over and over again to give birth to themselves. This reminds me of the Frida Kahlo painting, My Birth, in which her adult head is coming out of her own vagina. In her journal, she writes that she has given birth to herself in the painting. This is also how I perceive my self-birth, brutal, bloody, and grotesque. It is a reminder that transformation is always earned. Now, I'm not recommending that you make your life more difficult just for the sake of it. Disappointments, rejection, and suffering will come regardless, I promise. It's the nature of being alive. Even more so if we take risks, if we des decide to dedicate ourselves to changing the world in some form or other. What matters most is how we respond to these challenges. I can't tell you how many times my books were rejected. Lots of people felt that my protagonist was too abrasive and unlikable. But I believed in her, I believed in the story, and I bet those people who turned it down are really sorry now. Yeah, sometimes I'm petty. You can't worry about pleasing everyone. It's a waste of time, believe me. There will always be haters, and you know what? That's okay. What is the point of telling our stories? How can literature transform us? What can art do? What is the power of education? Part of this, I believe, is to foster empathy. When women, especially women of color, are able to see themselves in a book, there is immense power in that. I see literature as a way to express possibilities and nuances, transcend borders, and invoke wonder. Literature creates a sense of belonging and lets us live more fully and deeply. It allows us to learn about the ways in which others live. I think we can all agree that it's not a great time for Mexicans or any people of color for that matter, or those who identify as LGBTQ, really anyone who isn't a straight white dude. We need compassion more than ever, and I believe that books can help us dismantle oppressive power structures. You can help make this happen. I have an irrational amount of hope in younger generations. You will be the ones to save us all. No pressure. When I wrote I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter, I had so many hopes. I wanted teen girls to see themselves in Julia Reyes. I wanted them to feel understood and less alone. Since the novel came out last October, well, no, October 2017, I've received an overwhelming amount of responses from Latinas of all ages who are grateful to finally identify with the protagonist in a story. Many have told me that they've never felt so understood. This is exactly why I wrote this book. In her famous TED Talk, writer Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie discusses the danger of a single story. What happens when complicated, multifaceted human beings are only allowed one narrative? Our president is great at this. Adichie gives us the example of Africans always portrayed as poor and starving and how inaccurate and damaging that can be. We need to be able to tell all of our stories because the human experience is not singular.
I certainly didn't reach this level of success by myself. I'm grateful to my teachers who looked past my angst and noticed my talent and encouraged me to write. I'm grateful for my parents who crossed the border from Mexico in 1978. I'm thankful for my professors and mentors for cheering me on. I would also like to acknowledge all the women who came before me who, among other things, weren't allowed to even read or write. They paved the way for me to be standing here today. I'm often asked what advice I'd give to the young people. Number one, find your people. Create a community. Find those who will lift you up when you feel defeated and celebrate you when you've triumphed. You cannot do this alone. You cannot succeed without the help of others. And it makes life much more joyful. What is success anyway? I suppose I'm here because I've made it in some ways. I'm not gonna lie, the money is nice, but my life is amazing for so many other reasons. Sometimes it feels like a dream. I get to do exactly what I was meant to do. I get to tell stories and connect with people all over the country and all, of the, all over the world. I get to live on my own terms. My life has never had so much meaning and I wouldn't change anything about it. I am so grateful to everyone here today. I know you will do so much with what you've been given. I promise to use my voice to create a more inclusive and compassionate world. And I expect you to do the same. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Erica Sanchez. On behalf of the College of Education, I would like to present you with the 2019 Dean's Impacting Humanity Award. Next, I am pleased to bring your attention to those seniors who have demonstrated exceptional academic achievement receiving honors from the university and the College of Education. With those who are members of the Honors College, designated by the gold stoles you are wearing, those who are receiving university honors as indicated by your gold, silver, and bronze honor court, and those who are receiving high college honors who are wearing medallions with red and blue ribbons, and those who are receiving college honors who are wearing medallions with red ribbons, Please stand to be recognized. It is indeed our pleasure to recognize these outstanding students. Through your endeavors, you have enriched the entire academic community. You bring credit to yourselves, to your families, and the College of Education, and the University of Illinois at Chicago. We are proud of you and congratulate you for the distinction you have earned. Please join me in another round of applause for the honor students. Please be seated. Next, I would like to present the Dean's Merit Award. Every year, the College of Education recognizes outstanding graduating students who have demonstrated academic excellence, who possess exemplary qualities, and who will serve as role models and ambassadors for the College of Education and UIC. The 2019 Dean's Merit Awardee for the outstanding doctoral candidate is Persis Driver. While pursuing her doctorate degree, Persis continuously demonstrated her commitment to mentorship, leadership, and education. Students directly benefited from her instruction in the classroom and indirectly benefited as she led the College of Education's inaugural Teaching Assistance Training Seminar. In addition to Dr. Driver's teaching excellence, she has participated in professional organizations, committees, and continued her personal academic research agenda. Persis Driver, congratulations on your accomplishments. Please come forward to say a few words.
Thank you, and good evening. In the words of Toni Morrison, being your own story means you can always choose the tone. It also means you can invent the language to say who you are and what you mean. The process of completing a PhD is a process of building your own narrative, of finding your own voice, and of giving value to the voice of others. Growing up in India, my story definitely did not include this moment. Me standing on this podium could only ever happen in a Hollywood movie. And for this moment, I am grateful to my UIC community, to my College of Education community, and to my home community. Yet, even as we all have used and continue to use diverse tones, languages, and voices to weave our individual narratives, our collective story is one of a shared experience of resilience, collaboration, and humility. Many of us enter the PhD program because we believe we have an idea that can contribute to society and or to science. Yet, it is humbling when faced with the very first rejection, you find a community that is willing to help you defend and improve rather than fold and quit. Through success and failure, we all build resilience. It is humbling when we panic looking at the mountain of data we thought was a good idea to code. All you qualitative dissertation writers, you know what I'm talking about. But then we're reminded by our advisor, our committee members, our lab mates, we are a part of our team. This process is a collaborative process. It is humbling when your child or your partner says they love you after you were too busy to tuck them in or even sit with them yet again. And you realize that you are not going through this process alone. Today, now, we move forward as keepers and propagators of science, of equality and care, in a world that is not always ready to embrace facts or justice. And we will undoubtedly create new stories. But no matter the narrative, I really hope our voice is always resilient, our language always collaborative, and our tone always humble. Thank you. The degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest degree bestowed by the College of Education in recognition of a rigorous academic program culminating in the writing of a dissertation. Each of these scholars has invested several years in careful preparation under the guidance of faculty to produce an original piece of research that makes a contribution to the body of knowledge in education. Each of these scholars will now go on to be leaders in education as professors, administrators, and researchers. In recognition of the candidate's scholarly achievement accomplishments, they will be hooded on stage by their faculty advisors. I would like to welcome UIC Provost Susan Poser, who will confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. I would also like to introduce Associate Dean of the Graduate College, Laura Yonker, who will present the candidates. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy please rise, if you are able. Provost Poser, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Doctor of Philosophy degree for which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from the right side to the left side 
and congratulations. You may now be seated. The degree of Doctor of Education was one of the first doctorates of professional practice established at UIC and represents the highest professional degree available to educational practitioners. Each of these school leaders has invested several years in rigorous, closely supervised clinical practice, as well as demanding coursework with faculty in the College of Education. Each of them has completed a culminating capstone project that has built capacity to improve student learning. Together, these leaders will go on to achieve significant improvements in schools, districts, and the future of school leader preparation. In recognition of these school leaders' accomplishments, they will be hooded on stage by their faculty advisor. Associate Dean Yunker will again present the candidates, and UIC Provost Poser will confer the degree of Doctor of Education. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Education please rise? <laughs> Provost Poser, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Doctor of Education. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Doctor of Education degree for which you have been presented, and I admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from the right side to the left, and congratulations. And you may be seated. I would like to introduce Professor Norma Lopez Reyna, who will preside over the hooding ceremony. Will the new doctors of philosophy and education please come to the stage? Persis Driver. Dr. Driver has earned a PhD in educational psychology under the direction of Professor Terry Torkelson. Her dissertation is titled, To Cooperate or Not to Cooperate? How Undergraduates' Choices Align with Team and Self-Related Beliefs. Dr. Driver is hooded by Professor Torkelson. Melissa Gima Concepcion. Dr. Gima Concepcion has earned a PhD in literacy, language, and culture under the direction of Professor Alfred Tatum. Her dissertation is titled Black Males and Text, a Study of Dialogic Literacy Experiences. Dr. Gima Concepcion is hooded by Professor Tatum. Marcine Adams. Dr. Adams has earned a PhD in curriculum studies under the direction of Professor Aria Rasvar. Her dissertation is titled, Altering Teachers' Perceptions of Emergent Bilinguals Learning Through Action Research. Dr. Adams is hooded by Professor Rasvar. Gina Kodos. 
Dr. Codos has earned a PhD in educational psychology under the direction of Professor Kimberly Lawless. Her dissertation is titled, Women in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, Examining the Perennial Gender Gap. Dr. Codos is hooded by Professor Lawless. Claire Donovan Skein. Dr. Donovan Skein has earned a PhD in Literacy, Language, and Culture under the direction of Professor Rebecca Woodard. Her dissertation is titled, Linguistically Diverse Adolescents Navigating Dominant Language Ideology in an ELA Classroom. Dr. Donovan Skein is hooded by Professor Woodard. Emily Machado. Dr. Machado has earned a PhD in Literacy, Language, and Culture under the direction of Professor Rebecca Woodard. Her dissertation is titled, Young Children's Translingual and Transnational Writing in an Urban Literacy Classroom. Dr. Machado is hooded by Professor Woodard. Elizabeth Jimitter. Dr. Jimitter has earned a PhD in curriculum studies under the direction of Professor Hyun Su Park. Her dissertation is titled, Validity Evidence of Multiple Mini Interviews for Holistic Admissions in Physical Therapy Education. Dr. Jimitter is hooded by Professor Park. <laughs> Kevin Condon. Dr. Condon has earned a PhD in Policy Studies in Urban Education, Educational Organization and Leadership under the direction of Professor David Mayerowitz. His dissertation is titled, The Policy Process of School Leadership Reform, a Case Study of Illinois Public Act 960903. Dr. Condon is hooded by Professor Mayerowitz. Asia Reynolds. Dr. Reynolds has earned a PhD in policy studies in urban education, social foundations of education, under the direction of Professor David Stovall. Her dissertation is titled, Ain't Nobody Checking for Us, Race, Fugitivity, and the Urban Geographies of Black Girlhood. Dr. Reynolds is hooded by Professor Stovall. Craig DeVolto. Dr. DeVolto has earned a PhD in Policy Studies in Urban Education, Educational Organization and Leadership under the direction of Professor Benjamin Superfine. His dissertation is titled, Sense Making and Policy Implementation of EdTPA, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Dr. DeVolto is hooded by Professor Superfine. Giselle Nunez. Dr. Nunez has earned a PhD in special education under the direction of Professor Marie Tejero Hughes. Her dissertation is titled, A Home-Based Language Intervention with Mexican Immigrant Mothers and Their Children. Dr. Nunez is being hooded by Professor Hughes. <laughs> Keith Adams. Dr. Adams has earned an EDD in urban education leadership under the direction of Professor Cynthia Barron. His doctoral project is titled, Leveraging Cycles of Inquiry to Build Leadership, Teams, and Shared Vision for Social Emotional Learning. Dr. Adams is hooded by Professor Barron. <laughs> Nicolas Aquino. Dr. Aquino has earned an EDD in urban education leadership under the direction of Professor Cynthia Barron. His doctoral project is titled, The Coach and Facilitator, Fostering Teacher Leadership and Improving Team Effectiveness. Dr. Aquino is hooded by Professor Barron.
Shirley Chavaria. Dr. Chavaria has earned an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Professor Cynthia Barron. Her doctoral project is titled, Improving the Instructional Core While Building Trust. Dr. Chavaria is hooded by Professor Barron. <clears throat> Paul Carafiol. Dr. Carafiol has earned an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Professor Cynthia Barron. His doctoral project is titled, From Stagnation to Germination. Dr. Carafiol is hooded by Professor Barron. <laughs> Julia Otter Singler. Dr. Otter Singler has earned an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Professor David Marowitz. Her doctoral project is titled, Cultivating Distributed Leadership as a Strategy for School Improvement. Dr. Otter Singler is hooded by Professor Mayrowitz. <laughs> Paul Riskus. Dr. Riskus has earned an EDD in Urban Education Leadership under the direction of Professor Shelby Costner. His doctoral project is titled, Pushing New Edges of Growth at a High-Performing School. Dr. Riskus is hooded by Professor Costner. Alma Betsy Santana. Dr. Santana has earned an EDD in urban education leadership under the direction of Professor Lionel Allen. Her doctoral project is titled, Changing the Status Quo, Creating Effective Teams as a Conduit for Building Organizational Capacity. Dr. Santana is hooded by Professor Allen. Congratulations to all the new doctors of philosophy and doctors of education. Please give a round of applause to these graduates who have devoted many, many years to be here today. It now gives me great pleasure to present the Dean's Merit Award to the outstanding master degree candidate who has demonstrated academic excellence, possesses exemplary qualities, and will serve as a role model and ambassador for the College of Education and UIC. The 2019 Dean's Merit Awardee for the outstanding master's candidate is Marco Camarillo. Marco fused his previous studies in criminal justice with his master's work in youth development to focus on restorative justice. Through intentional acts of making systemic change in his community, Marco continues to impact individuals and institutions. Congratulations on your accomplishment, Marco. Please come forward to say a few words. Good evening, class of 2019. Buenas noches. Welcome, family and friends. Uh, as much as this is about us today, uh, this is a very important, important weekend for a lot of us. Uh, can I please invite every single mother in the building to please stand up? Me gustaría invitar a todas las mamás del edificio hoy que se paren, por favor. A todas, por favor, todas. Feliz Día de las Madres. Happy Mother's Day. Without, without you, we wouldn't be here today. Ama, Feliz Día de las Madres, Ama, la quiero mucho. As a first generation Latino and the first in my family to obtain a college degree, this journey has been the most challenging experience of my life. Throughout this journey, I have fortunately been surrounded by family and friends who have supported me as I strive for academic and professional growth. For that, I would like to acknowledge the following. For my family, for teaching me the value of education and being present when I needed someone to talk to. 
to my friends. Thank you for spending valuable time with me at coffee shops as we completed our assignments. To my amazing youth development cohort and Dr. Chico for making this journey one that I will never forget. Thank you for all of the knowledge, all of the expertise that you all shared in class and now that I now carry my toolbox in order to continue growing as the best educator possible. My fellow graduates, congratulations on this major accomplishment. It is important for us to reflect on all of the sacrifices and many trials and tribulations we endured in order to be in this moment and the tremendous growth we have developed because of it. Today marks a new beginning. You will now walk with the privilege of an education. And with that privilege comes an opportunity to take action. As we venture out to our careers and pursue our aspirations, remember who you are and what you have learned. Be the passionate, hopeful, patient, honest, and resourceful youth advocates you are striving to be. Believe in yourself and that you are here to make a change in the spaces you are entering or the spaces you are creating for our youth. During these times, you will ask yourself questions. Is it worth it? Am I making an impact? Do I deserve to be here? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is worth it. Yes, you are being impactful. And yes, you do deserve to be here. Know that I support you, the UIC supports you, and that your family and friends support you. Thank you. The degree of Master in Education will be bestowed on those candidates who have sought to further their knowledge in the field of education. Many have come from other disciplines to become certified as teachers. Others explored youth development, policy making, administration, or other endeavors in education. I would now like to ask Provost Poser to confer the degree of Master of Education and Associate Dean of the Graduate College, Laura Yonker, who will present the candidates. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Education please rise, if you are able. Provost Poser, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Master of Education. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Master of Education degree for which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from the right side to the left, and congratulations. I would now like to introduce Professors Tori Ka, Webb, and Stacy Horn, who will pr present the candidates for the Master of Education degree. Thank you, Dean Yonker. Will the new Masters of Education please come to the stage to be recognized by Provost Poser and Dean Tatum. Marco Camarillo, Youth Development. Yeah. 
Iman Abdallah. Barbara Edwards Hill, Early Childhood Education. Janice Francis, Early Childhood Education. Nelly Jimenez, Early Childhood Education. Samantha Martin, Early Childhood Education. Adnami Lopez, Early Childhood Education. Lauren Nemec, Early Childhood Education. Sarah Shakerly Ullaby, Early Childhood Education. Aaron Vanderhout, Early Childhood Education. Casey Walls, Early Childhood Education. Elizabeth Dorn, Educational Policy Studies. Camille Ehlers, Educational Policy Studies. Ruby V. Lepe, Educational Policy Studies. April McFadden, Educational Policy Studies. Latasha Pollard, Educational Policy Studies. Jabo Han, Educational Studies. Na Hao, Educational Studies. Shuju Hao, Educational Studies. Russell Trinery, Educational Studies. Nancy Walsh, Educational Studies. Walin Zhang, Educational Studies. Wanging Li, Educational Instructional Leadership. Michaela Strasser, Measurement, Evaluation, Statistics, and Assessment. Charlie Alfera, Science Education. Angel Cavillo, Science Education. Jesse Diaz, Science Education. John Inglebright, Science Education. Catherine Fortney, Science Education. Sergio Gaspar, Science Education. Jake Krzyzewski, Science Education. Jay Young, Science Education. Caroline Macias, Science Education. Marielle Ransel, Science Education. Megan Rock, Science Education. Maria Vega, Science Education. Gina Vittoria, Science Education. Lorraine Aka, Masters of Education, Special Education. Majed Ashari, Special Education. Aaron Amundsen, Special Education. Arielle Chesley, Special Education. Troy Dietrich, Special Education. Jennifer Finn, Special Education. Tara, Tara Catherine Finn, Special Education. Stephanie Fox, Special Education. 
Richard Glass, Special Education. Sarah Harms, Special Education. Megan Kennedy, Special Education. Keely McCarthy, Special Education. Brianne Nickel, Special Education. Karen Basenga, Special Education. Danielle Pape, Special Education. Kathleen Powers, Special Education. Genesis Romo, Special Education. Benjamin Sachs, Special Education. Carrie Saunders, Special Education. Bailey Schwartz, Special Education. Denise Suarez, Special Education. Nellie Trujillo, Special Education. Martha Alvarez, Youth Development. Lakeisha Beatty, Youth Development. Mercedes Diaz, Youth Development. Christopher Duran, Youth Development. Tish Hayes, Youth Development. Alyssa Maylene Mermia, Youth Development. Seely Moore, Youth Development. Robert Moses, Youth Development. Brittany Patrick Wade, Youth Development. Samantha Rodriguez, Youth Development. Omar Yamini, Youth Development. Mr. M. Bashir, Measurement, Evaluation, Statistics, and Assessment. Jennifer Volmar, Measurement, Evaluation, Statistics, and Assessment. Marina Ivaleauto, Special Education. Graduates, your families and guests, along with faculty and staff of the College of Education, take great pride in your accomplishments and would like to salute you with a round of applause. Please let's acknowledge these new Masters of Education. Now, it gives me pleasure to bestow the Dean's Merit Award on the outstanding bachelor's degree candidate who has demonstrated academic excellence, possesses exemplary qualities, and will serve as a role model and ambassador for the College of Education and UIC. The 2019 Dean's Merit Awardee for outstanding BA candidate is Maria Fernando Perez Iribe. <laughs> Maria joined the college as a transfer student and became highly involved through the Honors College and the Dual Emergent Pipeline Project. In addition to her urban education courses and field work, Maria co-authored a manuscript with faculty taught U.S. citizenship courses for the Instituto del Progreso Latino, and worked as a substitute ESL teacher at a local high school. This was before graduation. <laughs> Maria's commitment to her community exemplifies the College of Education's mission. Congratulations on your accomplishment. Please come forward to say a few words. Hook, 
Good evening, fellow graduates, family members, and friends. Before I begin, I would like to say again, Feliz Dia de las Madres. Happy Mexican Mother's Day to all the mothers here with us today. I would like to begin por dar gracias, saying thank you. Thank you to my parents, thank you to my sisters, and thank you to my husband por creer en mí. I do. Mi nombre es, my name is, Maria Fernanda Perez Iribe. Such a telenovela name, right? <laughs> I was born in Sinaloa, Mexico, y soy orgullosa de ser sinaloense. <laughs> and I am proud to be Sinaloan. My parents brought me to the United States when I was 10 months old. We left our home and our family in search for a better future. A lot of the stories that they tell me about our beginnings in the United States are heartbreaking, but they tell me with laughter, knowing that we are in a better place today. When I ask my parents what their American dream is, they do not say a big house and fancy cars. They see an education for their daughters and a chance for a better life. This June, my father will be going to visit his home country as a United States resident for the first time in 23 years. <laughs> I stand here today and I can proudly tell my parents that we have accomplished that dream. I would, like, I would like to ask all of my fellow graduates to give all the parents and loved ones a round of applause por todo su apoyo for all their support. We do. I might be standing here on the podium, but this is not my moment. This is our moment and I am grateful to be part of UIC's College of Education. We finally made it. Today marks a huge milestone in our lives. The journey to a bachelor's degree is not an easy one, and for some of us, including myself, it's been more than the four-year plan. Nevertheless, we are all here. We often joke around about the stress of a college education, and our generation sure has the means to prove it. But the truth is that it is not easy. We all have dealt with our individual struggles. So be extremely proud of our accomplishment today. We have learned a lot throughout our journey, lesson planning, social emotional learning, and a lot of theories such as Piaget, Bloom, and Vygotsky to name a few. But most importantly, we learned that we have the power to change the world. How overwhelming is that? But it's true. As educators, we have the power to change the world one child at a time. The career we chose is not an easy one. Every child is a world because every child faces their own reality every single day. Children bring their reality into the classroom. We, were, we will live our lives worrying about other people's children. We will try to find ways to positively affect their lives and help them learn their ABCs and one, two, threes all at the same time. The career we chose is not an easy one, but it's a rewarding one. You do. Class of 2019, when I look around, I see the brightest UIC flames. Flames bright enough to bring the light to educate young minds. Let's ignite this world. Thank you. The Bachelor of Arts degree in urban education is designed to prepare undergraduates to become teachers in urban elementary schools or educators in schools and communities in Chicago. Our graduates have engaged in intensive preparation in the final two years of their undergraduate programs and are leaving us well prepared 
to make a positive difference in the lives of children and youth. The Bachelor's of Arts degree in Human Development and Learning provides students with a strong grounding in research and theory concerning learning and development across the lifespan. Our graduates have a deep understanding of how contextual, institutional, structural, and cultural factors affect individuals' development, developmental trajectories and the implications of this for working with people in a variety of contexts. I would now like to call upon Provost Poser to confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Urban Education and the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Human Development and Learning. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Urban Education and Human Development and Learning please rise if you are able. Provost Poser, upon the recommendation of the faculty and by vote of the Senate, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Upon these recommendations and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the Bachelor of Arts degree for which you have been presented and admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. You may now move your tassel from the right side to the left. Congratulations. You may now be seated. I would now like to introduce Professors Federico Waitoler and Sarai Cobra Rodriguez, who will announce the candidates for the Bachelor's of Art degree. Thank you, Dean Tatum. Will the new Bachelors of Art please come to the stage to be recognized by the Provost, Poster, and Dean Tatum? Maria Perez Iribe, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Education, Elementary Education, Summa Cum Laude. High College Honors. Nekla Ali, Bachelor of Arts, Urban Education, Elementary Education, Summa Cum Laude, High College Honors. Asia Fatima, Cum Laude, College Honors. Vasti Carrera, summa cum laude, high college honors. Jocelyn Martinez, summa cum laude, high college honors. Sara Alcurdi, cum laude, college honors. Sushay Angulo, summa cum laude, high college honors. Maria Chansik, Magna Cum Laude, High College Honors. Daniela De Laurentiis, Magna Cum Laude, High College Honors. Evelina Di Fazuesca, Summa Cum Laude, High College Honors. Alex Lu Liu. Ying Yu Deng. Magna Cum Laude, High College Honors. <laughs> Yingyi Ling, Cum Laude, College Honors. <laughs> Heidi Pedrosa, Summa Cum Laude, 
High College Honours. Brianna Mead. Marta Gonzalez, Cum Laude College Honours. Chanel Guild, Cum Laude College Honours. Caroline Hesterman. Lauren Pusateri, Cum Laude College Honours. Melissa Smith, Summa Cum Laude High College Honours. Miguel Rodriguez, Cum Laude College Honors. Gabriel Cantero. Jenny Yoon, Cum Laude College Honors. Cinti Diaz, Magna Cum Laude High College Honors. Aide Rodriguez. Adrien Thomas, magna cum laude. Richelle Fajardo, magna cum laude, high college honors. Miranda Roberts, summa cum laude, high college honors. Paola Muñoz, cum laude, college honors. Nicolette Castaneda, Guadalupe Rosiles, Magna Cum Laude, High College Honors. Nancy Reyes, Cum Laude, College Honors. Nancy Ton, Cum Laude, College Honors. Afi Deselo, Cum Laude, College Honors. Chain Sireka, Sum laude, summa cum laude, high college honors. Destiny Villarreal, summa cum laude, high college honors. Sarai Olmos. Ricardo Torres. <laughs> Tiffany Pesana. Liliana Bentecourt. Sarah Hill. Appella Thompson. April Jones. Kenya Jones, Yolanda Leone, Erika Gonzalez, Jennifer Novacek, Eileen Mayra Ramirez, Chastity Rice. Marisol Rincón. Alicia Sandoval. Anna Sawyer. Cecilia Solis. Said. <laughs> Melvin Wolfock, <laughs> Wyatt Troutwine, <laughs> Daisy Virueta.
Shu Ming Min Mai Shu. Graduates, your family and guests, along with the faculty and staff of the College of Education, take great pride in your accomplishments and would like to salute you with a round of applause. Let's acknowledge these Bachelors of Arts. Graduates, graduates, you are all now officially alumni of the College of Education at UIC. <laughs> Parents, we can do better than that. We await your future achievements and watch with pride as you begin a new phase. I would now like to introduce you to UIC College of Education alumnus, Dr. Marlon Cummins, who will say a few words of welcome. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Dean Tatum. My name is Dr. Marlon Cummings, proud alumni of the class of 2013 PhD program of Policy Studies in Urban Education. Graduates, it is an honor and privilege to welcome you to a network of professional educators that are leading the charge in, in reshaping and enhancing educational opportunities for children and adults across the city, state, and nation. As I reflect back on my commencement, I, I remember feeling at least 10 different emotions all at once. Excitement, fatigue, freedom, hope, anxiety, fear of student loans, I'm still fearing those, by the way. The anticipation of more free time, but most importantly, I felt an excitement about the opportunity to share my joy of learning. You see, the joy of learning is an extension of the joy of teaching. As educators, we have to express joy in the work that we do. Because if we don't take joy in our work, then how can we expect students to enjoy learning and enjoy school? And without that joy, how will they understand the excitement that comes from learning something new? And how will they know that all they are it's not all that they can be. As you move into your careers in education, you have the responsibility to create joy and hope in the lives of children you will encounter. This responsibility for joy makes me think of Marva Collins, a famed Chicago educator who founded Westside Preparatory School out of her own home. And she did this because of her belief that students can have joy of and enjoyment in learning. She leaves us with these important words. When someone is taught the joy of learning, it becomes a lifelong process that never stops. Because once children learn how to learn, nothing is going to narrow their mind. The essence of teaching is to make learning contagious, to have one idea spark another. So what they need from us is common sense, dedication, enthusiasm, and a belief that all children are achievers. We need individuals who will take personally the failure of any one child. This is the challenge and joy of teaching. Graduates, this is being an educator. This is what's in front of you. This is your opportunity to share joy. On behalf of UIC College of Education alumni, I wish you all the very best. At the conclusion of tonight's ceremony, I ask you to join me across the street in the lobby of the, of the Student Services Building, where we have a small token of appreciation. Thank you and congratulations. You made it. Thank you, Marlon. And now Kelly Longmire returns to sing a final song to honor our graduates. She will be accompanied by Walter English. It is indeed an honor to sing for you. All congratulations. <clears throat> A single note passes out of the ashes. 
ashes as bickering of ember begins. It's the courage to turn when the pages have burned and your story now seems at an end. Seasons stay and seasons go, sending your memories adrift. It's a beautiful longing, embrace the unknown, that's the mystery of your gift. And the echoes of your melody will always live in these walls. And the lessons that you gave to me before you can fly, you must fall. It's a beautiful longing. Embrace the unknown. That's the mystery of your gift. There's a voice in the shadow calling for more. There's a frequent that beats from within Lending your voice to the warmth of the crowd There is strength in the choir of one Pure as the voice that sees the place Where your weight of your past may now lift it's the beautiful longing, embrace the unknown, that's the mystery of your gift. And the echoes of your melody will always live in these walls. And the lessons that you gave to me before you can fly, you must fall. So sing higher and higher. The frequent of love will come through. If you sing out of the ashes, the courage you need come from you. How beautiful is that? <laughs> Congratulations to you all. And the echoes of your melody will always live in these walls. And the lessons that you gave to me Before you can fly, you must fall It's a beautiful longing Embrace the unknown That's the mystery of your gift It's the beautiful longing Embrace the unknown, that's the mystery of your That was absolutely beautiful. Uh, dear graduates of the UIC College of Education, the time has now come to bid you farewell. I hope the lessons you've learned and the relationships you've made will sustain you as you move forward. I charge you to seek that which inspires and uplifts you as you make inroads to do work that inspires and uplifts others. Never become imprisoned by smallness or paralyzed by fear 
or a sense of inadequacy because at that moment, those who can benefit the most from your presence and confidence may experience the suffocation of their humanity. I want you to step into the arena and embrace the chance to sell or succeed or fail big. But do not limit yourself by stubbornness if there are winds dictating that you must change or grow or prosper or release. Embrace the idea of leading with tough-mindedness but tender-heartedness. I want to leave you with a very brief story about Big Charlie, who I met recently in the book Freedom Colonies, Independent Black Texans in the Time of Jim Crow. Big Charlie was a land accumulator during the Jim Crow era. He managed to accumulate 593 acres in 1906 creating what was referred to as freedom settlements, where children grew to adulthood with their self-esteem intact, protected from a thousand death cuts inflicted upon laws and customs. Big Charlie was part of a group of men and women who accumulated what he referred to as precious acres. These men wished to learn to read as much as they wanted to own their land. They were interested in educational and economic empowerment with a zeal to rejuvenate communities. Society did not look upon Big Charlie with sorry eyes because of his skin color or his southern accent. But people looked at Big Charlie with envious eyes because they could not match the standards he set for himself. The question now becomes, what are you the class of 2019 going to do with the precious acres awaiting you, the ones you already up occupy or the ones you will create, your classrooms, your schools, your communities, your firms, your enterprises, your homes, and your hearts to light the path toward educational empowerment and economic independence. I have confidence as the dean of this great college that you will protect these acres because you will set standards so high that they will be unmatched by those who cannot see beyond the limiting logs they have in their eyes. Shaping and protecting those precious acres embodies the spirit of this college. Do not allow anyone to diminish you, your culture, or your community by words or false imaginations often wrapped in tones of care and compassion because they cannot embrace your self-determination and storied independence. You are graduating from a college with faculty, staff, and students who advocate for justice and equity with a fervor that is rarely matched by any college in this nation. You have been forever stamped with a genetic gift of your alma mater. Do not shrink from this gift as you go forth to protect those precious acres. To be extraordinary and to make an impact, we thank you for helping us to be a college on the move.